In our first story, the Ministry of Gender and Social Protection says it is increasing its social protection project across the country to end child marriages. According to the ministry, as many girls are withdrawn from school and uh, forced into arranged marriages, and these deprive these school girls of a sustainable future. This practice, according to the ministry, apart from abusing the human rights of these girls, is also curtailing the ambitions and potentials of many girls across the country. Speaking at a debate and quiz sessions among students in first and second cycle schools in Cape Coast on early marriages, technical advisor of the Gender Ministry, Diana Adiko, intimated that the ministry was working very hard to end child marriages in Ghana. According to the Gender Ministry, the solution to end sexual and gender-based violence likely depends on the people in the rural and local communities where the problems are prevalent. Speaking at an educational outreach program at Jokwa Krobo in Ekunfi in the central region to interact with chiefs, opinion leaders, women and girls, the central regional director of the Department of Women and Children, Daoud Pe, who represented the Minister of Gender, charged the communities to report such cases of violence to the domestic violence and victim support unit promptly for redress. For example, after the program, we had an interaction with the traditional authorities. And one of the issues that they raised was that they have a lot of the issues we have spoken about going on in the community. However, when it comes to addressing the issues, when they have to report, they have to go all the way from here to Cape Coast. And sometimes even the transportation fee to go there is their challenge. So we will continue the engagement with them and see areas in which we can also help and areas they can also help us so that together we can address these issues. I believe that we can not set up decks in every community, but Dovsu has uh, other police stations. So we will engage them on how to use those facilities, the nearest police station. For example, when you leave the community, you can get to a police station in Jukwa where you can get help. So we are trying to see. In other activities, we are also engaging the police and training them. So we are expecting that with all that we are doing together, with other donors apart from the NIDA, we'll be able to get the major stakeholders together to address some of these bottlenecks and make it possible for the people to report. The Domestic Violence and Victim Support Unit report of high incidence of abuses meted out to people, especially women and girls. According to them, most of the girls below the age of 16 get pregnant that deprive them of their education. The Central Regional Dovsu Coordinator DSP George Apiasechi wants the communities to be bold to report such acts that are unlawful to his outfit. Since last year, unlawful assault cases is on the lead. It used to be now maintenance of the rate of parental duty. Uh, we have realized that uh, the assault cases is many now uh, as a result of the non maintenance cases. Um, per our records, uh, most of these cases are lodged by women who are no longer staying with men. Every community to have such a program from time to time. Because as you know, human behavior is dynamic. And so once people are educated from time to time, potential criminals will advise themselves and will stay away from community set violence. Richard Kujunyakon, Joy News, Cape Coast. Mineral Central Regional Minister Kweku Ricketts Hagan is asking critics of government's Community Day senior high schools not to be so quick to write the schools off. According to him, such schools need some time to adjust gradually into the mainstream school system. The regional minister's reaction follows reports that a time old senior high school at Otuam is not being patronized because of where it is cited. Kukurikat Hagan was speaking at the handing over of buses and pickups to schools and colleges in the central region. Sometimes we are so quick at, at uh, you know, judging and so quick at uh, making analysis. This is an entirely new school. It just got opened quite recently and uh, it takes a while to build up a school. There's definitely a need for the school. That is why it was built. 
and there are a lot of students or people who are interested in going to school there. The recruitment process is still ongoing. It's a process to get children to school. And I don't think there's anything wrong with where the school has been cited. And time will tell. I think it's too early for us to jump into such such conclusions. We need to leave the school, give the school time, give it a breathing space for the teachers and the staff and the community to gradually build the school up. A school life, like in France, if you don't know, almost collapsed two years when it was set up. And in France, Pim is a hundred and something years old. You know, so if somebody had jumped in about 160 or 70 years ago to say that in France, Pim school will fail or has failed, they would have been wrong. The regional minister is also asking schools that are protesting because they did not get some of the buses and pickups to be calm because a lot more supplies will be in. Buses are limited. You cannot give to all the schools. Therefore, you need to find a fair way of distributing the buses. And a lot of things were taken into consideration as to some of these schools are day schools or have a, a large number of their students being day students. So it is, it is an, an special needs schools. So it is important that they are served first. And then later on, the others will also be served. So I just want the, the schools who did not get not to be, you know, unhappy. Obviously, you expect some level of unhappiness. But to believe that the next time when we have more buses, they are the ones who are going to be, to be receiving those buses. President Dramani Mahama has announced that government in collaboration with the World Bank has begun an infrastructural development program in some schools throughout the country which would be funded by the World Bank and the Ghana Education Trust Fund would increase facilities such as uh, classroom blocks, dormitories, science laboratories and libraries among other projects in schools. President Mahama said this when he addressed staff and students of the Ibrigel City High School during the celebration of the 70th anniversary of the school. On infrastructure expansion at all levels of the educational calendar, is therefore premised on our commitment to put the people of Ghana first and the implementation of policies that will contribute to changing the lives of our people and transforming our country for the prosperity of all. Secondary education has been the main bottleneck in our education system. And this is why government is investing heavily in expanding this level of education. Community Day Senior High Schools are currently being built. 123 of them have been awarded on contract, and many of them are at various stages of completion. The government also introduced the progressively free senior high school, uh, uh, progressively free senior high school education program, and started it with day students. This year, in August, we hope to launch the program to cover boarding students in deprived communities. We've also expand, uh, embarked on a massive expansion of infrastructure in existing schools, both under the World Bank program and under our own Get Fund investments. Today, thanks to the expansion in school infrastructure, improvement in textbook availability per pupil, free distribution of textbooks and school uniforms nationwide, school enrollment has increased and the number of children in school at the basic level has also gone up. Madam Chairperson, government will continue to invest in our schools to provide the infrastructure that is necessary to ensure a good teaching and learning experience. We'll also continue to collaborate with the PTAs and all students to continue to uplift the facilities in the Burry Girls Secondary School. The improvements taking place here in the form of sanitary facilities, construction of a three-floor classroom block, renovation of the dining hall, a science laboratory, home economics block, and security mechanisms to contain the perimeters of the school have been made possible by the collaboration 
of all stakeholders, including the traditional authority. I wish to announce that government has meanwhile taken over the completion of the new dormitory block that was started by the PTA and it will be completed in due course. Ghana's youth have lost confidence in the capacity of politicians to effectively um, govern. And uh, that's the observation of Chairman of the National Peace Council, the Reverend Professor Emmanuel Asante. Professor Asante says the situation is a threat to the country's democracy, he is um, as well demanding immediate steps by politicians to remedy the situation. To be honest with you, when you talk to the young, a lot of young people, they are disappointed. Why? Because we are talking too much when they have no jobs. We are creating tension and fear, which shouldn't be the case. And then they begin to sit back and say, is, is it worth it? I have come into contact with some young people who said they would not even vote for the simple reason that, you know what they are saying, all of them are the same. But I think politicians should do something to salvage that image. That's not the case. We need to explain things clearly to people, let them know what are the challenges, and what efforts are we making to address these challenges. Let the young people in our nation see politicians not as enemies who are at each other's throat, but as people who have different ideas, contest of ideas, that they love one another. Once we begin to do these things, I think we'll be able to salvage the image. So that if we don't